Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on negative exponents, and our real-world link is on insects. The table shows the approximate wing beats per minute for certain insects. Write a ratio in simplest form that compares the number of wing beats for a butterfly to a housefly. Well, if we just start off with the butterfly 100 over the housefly's 10,000, we can divide by 100 on both top and bottom and simplify this to 1 over 100. Next, write the ratio as a fraction with an exponent in the denominator and as a decimal. Let's take care of the decimal first. 1 over the 100 is 1 hundredth. And as a decimal, 0 0.01 is how we write 1 hundredth. Now, write the ratio as a fraction with an exponent in the denominator. Well, we're still going to have 1 in the numerator. And the exponent in the denominator, ask yourself, well, 10 squared... Well, 10 squared is 100, and that's what we're going to use. We're going to replace the 100 with 10 squared, since 10 squared is 100. Number three, complete the first four rows of the table showing the exponential and standard forms of power of 10. 10 to the third, which is 10 times 10 times 10, gets us in standard form 1,000. Now, the next one is 100, and for 100th, one we just said the 100 was 10 to the second power, so that's what we're going to use. 10 to the second power is 100. Now, 10 to the first power, that's just 10. 10 to the zero power, that's actually going to be 1. Question four, wit or what operation is performed when you move down the table? Well, as we move from 1,000 to 100, and 100 to 10, and 10 to 1, it appears that we're dividing each of these by 10. And that's what we're doing. We're dividing by 10 each time. And so what operation is performed when you move down the table? Division. And what happened to the exponent? Well, each time we went down from 3 to 2, 2 to 1, 1 to 0, we decreased by 1. And so question 6, extend the table to include the next three entries. Well, we went 10 to the third, 10 to the second, 10 to the first, 10 to the zero. We're going down by one. So the only logical step next is 10 to the negative one. Then we have 10 to the negative two. And lastly, 10 to the negative three. Now we're dividing by 10 each time we go down on the right side. And so if we continue dividing by 10, 1 divided by 10, for 1 divided by 10 to get here, is 1 over 10, or the fraction 1 tenth. Now as a decimal, we can write this as 0 0.1. Well, if we divide by another 10, this is going to end up for 10 to the negative 2 being 1 over 100, or 0 0.01. And lastly, 10 to the negative third, well, 10 to the third is 1,000, so maybe 10 to the negative third, trying to catch on to the pattern here, is 1 
over 1,000, which is a decimal, 0 0.001. We're going to use the pattern from this table as we work with negative exponents today. So our key concept is zero and negative exponents. Any non-zero number to the zero power is one. Any non-zero number to the negative n power is the multiplicative inverse of its nth power. And whenever you read multiplicative inverse, you can also think of reciprocal. Multiplicative inverse and reciprocal are one and the same. So what have we said? Well, 5 to the 0 power, or any number to the 0 power, is 1. And with our negative power, it's the multiplicative inverse of its nth power. Well, 7 to the 3rd would be 7 times 7 times 7. Well, the multiplicative inverse, or reciprocal of 7, is 1 seventh, which is why you see the 1 seventh times 1 seventh times 1 seventh, which is 1 over 7 to the 3rd. You can use exponents to represent very small numbers. Negative powers are the result of repeated division. So as we move into our examples, write each expression using a positive exponent. Well, 6 to the negative third, we can rewrite as 1 over 6 to the third. Because after all, 6 to the negative third, the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal is 1 sixth times 1 sixth times 1 sixth, which is 1 over 6 to the third. a to the negative fifth, same idea, 1 over a to the fifth. So as we look at 7 to the negative second power, that is going to be, as a positive exponent, 1 over 7 to the second power, 1 over 7 squared. You could simplify that to 1 over 49, but we're being asked in our directions to write using a positive exponent, so we'll just stop there. What about b? b to the negative fourth. Well, that's going to be 1 over b to the positive 4. Any number, like in c, to the 0 power is simply 1. So 5 to the 0 is 1. And m to the negative 3, that's going to be 1 over m to the third power. So when we're given a negative exponent, we can rewrite it using a positive exponent by using the multiplicative inverse or just going 1 over that and making the exponent positive. Now as we continue on, our next set of guided examples has us going the other way. Write each fraction as an expression using a negative exponent other than negative 1. Guided example 3, 1 over 5 squared, kind of going in reverse. We're going to use 5 to the negative 2. What about in, in an example like 4, where we have 1 over 36? Well, we're not allowed to write this as 36 to the negative 1. We're not allowed to do that. Other than negative 1 is what we're looking for. So what they did here, well, how can I write 36 using an exponent? Well, think about what times itself is 36. Well, 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5 is 25. 6 times 6 is 36. So we can rewrite 36 as 6 squared. And then we have 1 over 6 squared is 6 to the negative second power. So let's take a look at our got it questions. For e, 1 over 8 to the third, we can simply rewrite this one as 8 to the negative third power. What about f? 1 over 4. Well, we need to think, what does 1 over 4 
equal what times itself is for, if we're looking for exponents. Well, 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. So I can rewrite this as 1 over 2 squared. I can basically substitute the 2 squared for the 4. And if I have 1 over 2 squared, using a negative exponent, I can write that as 2 to the negative 2 power. Then we have 1 over c to the 5th. Well, for that, we can go c to the negative 5th power. And for h, 1 over 27. Well, we need to rewrite that 27. If we look at just squaring a number to get to 27, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 6 is 36. Huh. Well, squaring an integer is not going to work here. Maybe we should look at taking a number to the third power. Well, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. That didn't work. What about 3 cubed? 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. So we can rewrite this 1 over 27 as 1 over 3 to the 3rd power, since 3 to the 3rd power is 27. So when you're looking for these on your own, ask yourself, okay, can I do a square? Can I go this times this or do I need to go to a cubed? The number times itself times itself. Things you need to work on. To finish the question, 1 over 3 to the 3rd power, rewriting this as a negative exponent, it's going to be 3 to the negative 3rd power. As we continue on, guided example 5, one human hair is about 1 thousandth of an inch in diameter. Write the decimal as a power of 10. We're going to take this decimal then and write it as a fraction, one thousandth. We're going to look as a power of 10, 10 to what power is 1,000? A little clue here. Notice there's three zeros to the third power, 1 over 10 to the third power. Well, we want to rewrite this as a power of 10, so we need to rewrite this as a negative exponent. So we're going to take this from 1 over 10 to the third power into 10 to the negative third power. So on our got it question, a water molecule is, well, this meters long. Write the decimal as a power of 10. Well, rewriting this as a fraction is going to be a good way to go and how to figure this out we need to count our place value. We'll start tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, ten millionths, hundred millionths, billionths, ten billionths long. So this number as a fraction is one over 10 billionths. That's a lot of zeros. In fact, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 zeros. So I can rewrite this then as 1 over 10 to the 10th power. As 10 to the 10th power is equal to 10 billion. Again, count your place value, write out your fraction, count your zeros, and that's going to become your exponent, 1 over 10 to the 10th. Now, to finish the question, we want to rewrite this just as a power of 10, and so this is going to be 10 to the negative 10th power. As we continue on now to the last part of this lesson, multiply and divide with negative exponents. The product of powers and the quotient of powers rules can be used to multiply and divide powers with negative exponents. 
Remember, when we had a power multiplied by a power, we added the exponents. When we had a power divided by a power, we subtracted the exponents. And we can do the same here even with negative exponents. So take a look. Guided example six, five to the third times five to the negative fifth power. We're still going to add the exponents, the three and the negative five, and that becomes negative two. Well, we want to rewrite this from five to the negative second power as one over five squared. And 5 squared is 25, so 1 over 25 is our answer. What about guided example 7 with the variables? This is w to the negative 1 divided by w to the negative 4. Well, we can subtract the exponents, and that's what we have here. w to the negative 1 minus negative 4. And remember, we can keep, change, opposite with our integers to get negative 1 plus 4 which is a positive 3, so w to the third. And let's try this on our own. For j, we have 3 to the negative 8 times 3 to the second. So this is going to be, since they're the same base, 3 to the negative 8 plus 2. Well, negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. And I can rewrite that as 1 over 3 to the 6th. Now, I'd be happy with that as an answer, 1 over 3 to the 6th power. But if you had a calculator and wanted to simplify 3 to the 6th power, 3 to the 6th power is 729. So you can also write this answer as 1 over 729. What about k? 11 to the second power over 11 to the fourth. Well, here we need to subtract the exponents. So we're going to have 11 to the 2 minus 4. Well, if we were to keep the 2, change the subtraction to addition, and the opposite of 4 is negative 4, we could easily see, hopefully, that this is 11 to the negative second power. If we rewrite that, that's 1 over 11 squared. And again, if you left that answer as 1 over 11 squared, I'd be okay with that. Or you can find 11 squared to get 121. So 1 over 121. Next for L. Example L n to the ninth times n to the negative fourth. Well, that's going to be n to the ninth plus negative four. And nine plus negative four is a positive five. And that's it. This is just going to be n to the fifth power. And lastly, b to the negative 4 over b to the negative 7, we can rewrite that as b to the negative 4 minus negative 7. And once again, if we keep the negative 4, change the subtraction to addition, and the opposite of negative 7 is 7, we end up with b to the third, since negative 4 plus 7 is 3. And that's our final answer, b to the third. So we can use our integer rules and our product of powers and quotient of powers rules to multiply and divide powers with negative exponents. That is it for this lesson on negative exponents. Good luck.